BFN 112. Quantitative Methods 1. Study Session 1. Functions and Graphs. Introduction. In this study session, you will be introduced to differences between functions from an ordinary relation, all functions, given certain values of the independent variable, and the graphs of common algebraic functions such as linear, quadratic, logarithmic, and exponential functions as well as the function extraction. Functions and Graphs. Generally, the coordinates are written as a, x, y, where x can be called the x-coordinate or abscissa and y is called a coordinate or ordinate. A function is simply a rule, a process, or a method that produces a correspondence between two sets of objects such that, to each object in the first set there corresponds one and only one object in the second set. The domain and range of given functions. The first set is called the domain, and the set of the corresponding objects in the second set is called the range. Whenever the domain is not specified, then you assume that it is the set of all real numbers that produces real values of the dependent variable. The rule depicted in figure 1.3 above is d equals 1000 minus 10p, where d is demand and p is the price. Notice that, for p equals 10, d can only be 100 d minus 10, 10, equals 900. d can only be 950 for p equals 5, 800 for p equals 20, etc. Here, we have stated a function in an equation form where d is the dependent variable and p is the independent variable. You would therefore write d equals fp, read as d is a function of p conventionally, you would write y equals fx. It does not matter the letter being used. The order is the same. Notice that all equations do not give rise to a functional relationship. Composite functions. It is possible for a variable to depend on another, which may itself depend on yet another variable. The demand for Coca-Cola may depend on its price, which may itself depend on government policies. Organizational performance may depend on the motivation of workers, which may sometimes depend on remuneration. This implies a double correspondence. Types of function. There are different types of functions. But a few of them shall be considered with their graphs which are listed below. Linear functions, polynomial of degree 1. 2D degree polynomial, quadratic function. Polynomials of degree k greater than 2. Exponential functions. You can also identify some other types of functions like 1. Continuous functions. These are functions that give rise to graphs that are unbroken. But discrete function gives rise to broken graphs. The domain of the former continues along with the real numbers within the given's bracket while that of the latter is a set of discrete numbers. For example, fx equals 2x plus 1 will be continuous within the domain minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 while gx equals 1 slash x is not continuous within the same bracket. 2. y is explicitly stated as a function of x if y is written as the subject of a formula. This is an explicit function. But y is implicitly stated as a function of x if it is not expressed as the subject of the formula. For example, y equals 2x plus 1 is an explicit function while y minus 2x equals 1 is an implicit function. You may refer to the study session, changing the subject of a formula to be able to transform an implicit function into an explicit function or vice versa. 3. One-to-one -one function. A function is said to be a one-to-one -one function, also called a one-to-one -one mapping if each range value corresponds to exactly one domain value. Remember that a function is a rule which assigns to every element of the domain one to only one element of the range. 4. Inverse function. A function must first be a one-to-one -to, -one to have an inverse function. If a particular function is one-to-one, -one, then the inverse is the function formed by interchanging the dependent variable and the independent variable. 5. One variable function slash multiple variable functions. A one variable function is a function that has only one independent variable. Function extraction. Let the table below be the data collected for the sale of Coca-Cola after some trial variations in price. By simple regression, we observe that d equals 1000 minus 10p. Converting some data into an equation form may however not be simple. You, therefore, have to approximate, using a line of the goodness of fit. Line of best fit. Summary of study session 1. In study session 1, please note the following. 1. The coordinates are written as a, x, y, where x can be called the x-coordinate or abscissa and y is called the y-coordinate or ordinate. 2. It is possible for a variable to depend on another, which may itself depend on yet another variable. 3. Different types of functions exists. Linear functions, polynomial of degree 1 to d degree polynomial, quadratic function polynomials of degree k greater than 2. 
exponential functions. 4. Converting some data into an equation form may however not be simple. You therefore have to approximate, using line of goodness of fit, line of best fit. Study Session 2, Exponents and Logarithms Introduction In this study session, you will be introduced to performance of the basic arithmetic functions, the application of four basic functions of logarithm to solve logarithmic problems and combine the knowledge of indices and logarithm to solve exponential equations. Exponents Exponents otherwise called indices or the powers to which a number is raised, covers the manipulation of multiple indexes where indices is actually the plural form of index. However, indices is the most common term used especially at the secondary school levels. In furtherance of making this study session as simple as it actually is, you shall call it indices from henceforth. Indices become very handy when you consider very large or very small numbers. On its part, the logarithm of a number, a, to the base of another number, b, is the number to which b can be raised to give a. If the logarithm of a to base b, written as log underscore b a, is x for instance, then a is equal to b raised to the power of x. If log underscore b a equals x, b to the power of x equals a. Laws of indices. There are some simple laws of indices which, if obeyed, make any indices problem to be as simple as a, b, c, rule a. x to the power of a times x to the power of b equals x a plus b example, 1 evaluate x to the power of 4 times x cubed. By our preceding law x to the power of 4 times x cubed equals x to the power of 4 plus 3 equals x to the power of 7. Now consider that x to the power of 4 equals x times x times x times x and x cubed equals x times x times x. Colon. x to the power of 4 times x cubed equals x times x times x times x times x times x times x equals x times x times x times x times x times x times x equals x to the power of 7. This law becomes very useful if you were to solve x to the power of 47 times x to the power of 53 for instance. You would simply write x to the power of 47 times x to the power of 53 equals x to the power of 43 plus 57 equals x to the power of 100, instead of filling your book with multiples of x's. Example, to evaluate the following indices. a to the power of 22 times a to the power of 17. A cube times b to the power of 6 times a to the power of 9 times b to the power of 7. Solution. a to the power of 22 times a to the power of 17 equals a to the power of 22 plus 17 equals a to the power of 39. A cube times b to the power of 6 times a to the power of 9 times b to the power of 7 equals a cube times a to the power of 9 times b to the power of 6 times b to the power of 7. A cubed plus 9 times b to the power of 6 plus 7 equals a to the power of 12 times b to the power of 13 equals a to the power of 12 b to the power of 13. Note that you did not add up the powers 12 and 13 since their bases are different, being a and b respectively. Rule b. x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b equals x to the power of a minus b. For example, x to the power of 5 divided by x cubed equals x to the power of 5 minus 3 equals x squared. Solving this as we did earlier on. x to the power of 5 divided by x cubed equals x to the power of 5 over x cubed. Equals x times x times x times x times x all over x times x times x. Equals x times x. Example 4. Evaluate the following. 8a to the power of 4 times 12a to the power of minus 13. 24a to the power of minus 2 times 3a cubed all over 12a to the power of 14. Solution. 8a to the power of 4 times 12a to the power of minus 13 equals 8 times 12a to the power of 4 minus 13 equals 96a to the power of minus 9. 24a to the power of minus 2 times 3a cubed all over 12a to the power of 14 equals 24 times 3 all over 12a to the power of minus 2 plus 3 minus 14 equals 6a to the power of minus 13. Rule C x to the power of a into bracket to the power of b equals x to the power of a b. For example 2 squared into bracket cubed equals 2 squared times 3 equals 2 to the power of 6. Notice that 2 squared into bracket cubed equals 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared equals 2 squared plus 2 plus 2 equals 2 to the power of 6, by the first law, rule a. Example 5. Find the values of the following. 6 squared into bracket to the power of 4x12 into bracket to the power of 6. 
3 squared into bracket to the power of 4x6 cubed into bracket squared all over 12 squared into bracket cubed. Solution. I, 6 squared into bracket to the power of 4x12 into bracket to the power of 6. Equals 2 times 3 into bracket squared times 4 times, 2 times 2 times 3 into bracket to the power of 6. Equals 2 times 3 into bracket to the power of 8 times 2 squared times 3 into bracket to the power of 6. Equals 2 to the power of 8 times 3 to the power of 8 times 2 to the power of 12 times 3 to the power of 6. Equals 2 to the power of 8 plus 12 times 3 to the power of 8 plus 6. Equals 2 to the power of 20 times 3 to the power of 14. 2, 3 squared into bracket to the power of 4 times 6 cubed into bracket squared all over 12 squared into bracket cubed. Equals 3 squared times 4 times bracket 2 cubed times 3 cubed close bracket squared all over 2 squared times 2 squared times 3 squared all into bracket cubed. Equals 3 to the power of 8 times 2 cubed times 2 times 3 cubed times 2 all over 2 to the power of b bracket 2 plus 2 close bracket 3 times 3 squared times 3. Equals 2 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 8 plus 6 all over 2 to the power of 12 times 3 to the power of 6, equals 2 to the power of 6 minus 12 times 3 to the power of 14 minus 6. Equals 2 to the power of minus 6 times 3 to the power of 8. You will notice that x to the power of a times y to the power of b remains as it is, since the bases x and y are different. The same thing applied to 2 to the power of minus 6 times 3 to the power of 8 above. Rule D x to the power of 0 equals 1, 6 cubed minus 3 equals 6 to the power of 0, but 6 cubed minus 3 equals 6 cubed divided by 6 cubed, equals 6 times 6 times 6 all over 6 times 6 times 6, equals 1, since 6 cubed minus 3 equals 6 to the power of 0 and 6 cubed minus 3 equals 1, 6 to the power of 0 equals 1, indeed, for any value of x, x to the power of 0 equals 1. Hence 100 to the power of 0 equals 1, 3 own number 1 over 2 into bracket to the power of 0 equals 1 etc. Rule e. x to the power of minus a equals 1 over x to the power of a. For example, 2 to the power of minus 3 equals 1 over 2 cubed. Notice that 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 to the power of 7 equals 2 to the power of minus 3, but 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 to the power of 7 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 all over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times 2 equals 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 equals 1 over 2 cubed since 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 to the power of 7 equals 2 to the power of minus 3 and 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 to the power of 7 equals 1 over 2 cubed 2 to the power of minus 3 equals 1 over 2 cubed so that 3 to the power of minus 2 equals 1 over 3 squared and minus 5 into bracket to the power of minus 3 equals 1 over minus 5 into bracket cubed equals minus 1 over 5 cubed you would notice that the final answer was negative simply because the index, 3, is odd. Thus, a negative base with an odd index will give rise to a negative number, while the reverse will be the case if the index was even, i.e. minus 3 into bracket squared is positive. Rule f. x into bracket to the power of 1 over a, equals a root x as long as a is neither 0 nor negative, the reason for these exclusions has been given earlier. Consider 9 to the power of 1 over 2 times 9 to the power of 1 over 2 equals 9 to the power of i into bracket 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, equals 9 to the power of 1, equals 9. If 9 to the power of 1 over 2 equals x, x squared equals 9. Therefore x equals 3. But root 9 equals 3. Therefore 9 to the power of 1 over 2, equals root 9. Similarly to the power of 1 over 3 times 8 to the power of 1 over 3 times 8 to the power of 1 over 3, equals a to the power of i into bracket 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3, equals 8 to the power of 1 equals 8. If 8 to the power of 1 over 3 equals x, x cubed equals 8, x equals 2. Hence x to the power of 1 over a, equals, a root x. It follows that x to the power of b over a, equals into bracket, a root x close bracket to the power of b, equals, a root into bracket x to the power of b. Recall that x to the power of b over a, equals into bracket x to the power of 1 over, a, close bracket to the power of b, or into bracket x to the power of b close bracket to the power of 1 over a, equals into bracket, a root x close bracket to the power of b, or, a root, into bracket x to the power of b close bracket. Example 6. Evaluate the following. i, 27 to the power of minus 2 over 3, 2, 
32 to the power of 1 over 5, 3, into bracket x cubed close bracket to the power of minus 2 over 3, 4, into bracket 1 over 9 close bracket to the power of 0, v, into bracket 1000 close bracket to the power of minus 5 over 3. Solution. I, 27 to the power of minus 2 over 3, equals 1 all over 27 squared over 3, equals 1 all over, into bracket 3 cubed close bracket squared over 3, equals 1 all over 3 squared, equals 3 to the power of minus 2, 2, 32 into bracket to the power of 1 over 5, equals 2 to the power of 5 into bracket to the power of 1 over 5, equals 2 to the power of 1, equals 2, 3, x cubed into bracket to the power of minus 2 over 3, equals x to the power of minus 2 into bracket cubed over 3, equals x to the power of minus 2, 4, 1 over 9 into bracket to the power of 0, equals 1, 5, 1000 into bracket to the power of minus 5 over 3, equals 10 cubed into bracket to the power of minus 5 over 3, equals 10 to the power of minus 5, notice, however, that we can evaluate minus 32 into bracket to the power of 1 over 5, the base is negative. Minus 32 into bracket to the power of 1 over 5, equals minus 2 into bracket to the power of 5 close bracket to the power of 1 over 5, equals minus 2 into bracket to the power of 1, equals minus 2. Logarithms Sometimes, you may simply write that log of 100 equals 2 without indicating the base. When this happens, you are then talking of the decimal base, base 10. Most logarithm tables contain logarithms values to the base of 10. For example the logarithm of 3 equals 0.4771, that of 2 equals 0.3010. Laws of logarithms There are certain laws that must be borne in mind whenever you are manipulating logarithms. The most important of them are as follows. A, log base C of AB, equals log base C of A, plus log base C of B. Example, log base 10 of 100 equals log base 10 into bracket 10 times 10, equals log base 10 of 10, plus log base 10 of 10, equals 1 plus 1, equals 2. b, log base c of a divided by b into bracket, equals log base c of a minus log base c of b. Example, log base 10 of, into bracket 100,000 divided by 100, equals log base 10 of 100,000 minus log base 10 of 100, equals 5 minus 2, equals 3. Notice that log base 10 of, into bracket 100,000 divided by 100, equals log base 10 of 10,000, equals 3. C, log base C of, A to the power of N, equals N, log base C of, A. Example, log base 10 of 10 cubed, equals 3 log base 10 of 10, equals 3 times 1, equals 3. Notice that log base 10 of 10 cubed equals log base 10 of 1,000, equals 3. D, log base c of a, equals log base b of a divided by log base b of c. This fourth law is essential where the logarithm value and the required base in difficult or far-fetched. Application of logarithms. Usually, there are some seemingly complex problems that would be unsolvable with the little mathematical tools that we have acquired, without logarithm. Summary of study session 2. In study session 2, please note the following. 1. Exponents otherwise called indices or the powers to which a number is raised, cover the manipulation of multiple indexes where indices are actually the plural form of an index. 2. Exponential functions are the inverses of logarithmic functions. Thus logarithms are veritable tools used in solving exponential equation problems. If 10 raised to the power of 2 equals 100, it implies that the logarithm of 100 to the base of 10 equals 2. 3. Some simple laws of indices which, if obeyed, make any indices problem to be as simple as a, b, c r. Rule a, x to the power of a, times, x to the power of b, equals x to the power of a plus b. Rule b, x to the power of a, divided by, x to the power of b, equals x into bracket, a, minus b. Rule c, into bracket, x to the power of a, close bracket to the power of b, equals x to the power of a, b. Rule d, x to the power of 0 equals 1. Rule e, x to the power of minus a, equals 1 divided by, x to the power of a. Study session 3, changing the subject of formula. Introduction. In this study session, 
you will learn how to identify the dependent variable or subject of a given function or equation and how you can transform a given function into its explicit form, such that the dependent variable becomes the subject of the relation. The process of changing subjects of formulae. Given that, I, equals PRT divided by 100, where, I equals interest, P equals principal, R equals rate, and T equals time, you might want to calculate, for instance, the principal, given the other variables. You would then find that P equals 100 times I, divided by RT, where P is now the subject of the formula. Rules for changing subjects of formulae. There may be some problems that would not be as obvious and simple as the one you have just considered above. Therefore, you want to learn some of the simple principles or rules to observe when changing the subject of a formula. Summary of Study Session 3 In Study Session 3, please note the following. 1. Given that, I, equals PRT divided by 100, where, I equals interest, P equals principal, R equals rate and, T equals time. 2. Rules for changing subjects of formulae are. Rule 1 given, X plus A equals B, X equals, B minus A. Rule 2 given, A, X equals B, X equals B divided by A. Rule 3 given, N root X equals A, X equals A to the power of N. Study Session 4 Remainder and Factor Theorems Introduction The cheapest method to solve quadratic equation problems is the method of factorization. It is also very easy to solve some other higher equations such as cubic equations by factorizing them. However, it is often a difficult task to find the factors of these higher order equations or expressions at a glance. The easiest available method to do this is the factor and remainder theorem. Division of an algebraic expression by another. Find the factors of a given algebraic expression below. When you divide by x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 by, x minus 1. Considering dividing x minus 1, dividing x cubed, plus 2x squared, minus 5x plus 2. Dividing x cubed by x, equals x squared, bring x squared up, x squared times x, minus 1, equals x cubed, minus x squared. Positive x cubed, cancel negative x cubed, equals 0, 2x squared plus x squared, equals 3x squared, left with, 3x squared minus 5x. Dividing 3x squared by x, equals 3x, bring 3x, up, 3x times x, minus 1, equals 3x squared, minus 3x. Positive 3x squared, cancel negative 3x squared, equals 0, minus 5x, minus negative 3x, equals minus 2x, left with, minus 2x plus 2. Dividing minus 2x by x, equals minus 2, bring minus 2, up, minus 2 times x, minus 1, equals minus 2x, plus 2. Negative 2x, cancel positive 2x equals 0, positive 2 minus positive 2, equals 0. Remainder equals, 0. The result can be depicted in the identity stated below x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 2, equals into bracket x minus 1, open bracket, x squared plus 3x minus 2 close bracket minus 2. From simple arithmetic, you can conclude that 0 is the remainder when the function x squared plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 was divided by, into bracket, x minus 1, the divisor, to arrive at x squared plus 3 by 2, the quotient. The remainder theorem gives us a simple way of finding out the remainder, without going through the long process of division. Recall that the division process above can be represented as stated below. x squared plus 2x cubed minus 5x plus 2 equals into bracket, x minus 1. Quotient plus remainder suppose we substitute into bracket, 1fx minus 1, equals 0, x equals 1 close bracket, in the above identity we then have. 1 plus 2 minus 5 plus 2, equals 0x quotient plus remainder. 0 equals remainder. But f1 equals 0. Therefore remainder of, f1 is 0. This process can be applied to any such expression divided by x minus a. Thus. Expression equals into bracket x minus a close bracket, x quotient plus remainder. Into bracket x minus a close bracket, x quotient plus remainder. Putting x equals a, in the above identity, we get that the remainder equals the value of the expression when x equals a. Put differently, remainder equals f, a. Therefore, to find the remainder, when f, x, is divided by x, minus a, we simply find f, a. 
Summary of Study Session 4 In this study session, please note the following. From simple arithmetic, you can conclude that 0 is the remainder when the function x squared plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 2, was divided by, into bracket x minus 1, the divisor to arrive at x squared plus 3 by 2, the quotient. Study Session 5, Equations and Inequalities Introduction In this study session, you will be introduced to different types of equations and inequalities and how to solve them. Equations An equation is two, or sometimes more than two, algebraic expressions that are joined by the equality sign, equals. For example y equals x squared 3x plus 2 and x squared 9 equals 0 or equations. Earlier in this course, you noted that all equations may not give rise to a function but all functions give rise to equations. You shall be looking at linear equations in one variable, simultaneous equations with both linear and simultaneous equations with one linear and one quadratic, and then quadratic equations. Linear equations in one variable. Literally, a linear equation, whose graph is a straight line, is usually of the form y equals mx plus c, where m, is the gradient and c, is the intercept on the, y-axis, the point at which the graph cuts the y-axis. Other examples are y equals 2x plus 5, y equals, x divided by 2 plus 6 and, 3y plus 12x, equals 18. Notice that the last example is stated in an implicit form and can still be transformed into its explicit form, y equals 6 minus 4x or y equals, minus 4x plus 6. Example. Solve the following sets of equations. A. 8x minus 3 open bracket, x minus 4 close bracket, equals 3 open bracket, x minus 6 close bracket, plus 6. b. 3x minus 2 open bracket, 2x minus 5 close bracket, equals 2 open bracket, x plus 3 close bracket, minus 8. c. Open big bracket, open bracket, x plus 1 close bracket, divided by 3 close big bracket, minus, x divided by 4, equals 1 divided by 2. To solve an equation actually means to find the value of x for which the two sides of the equation will balance or be equal. It involves some basic principles. Whatever is added to or multiplied by any side must be done to the second side, for both sides to remain balanced. Simultaneous equations. There are at least five ways of solving simultaneous equation problems, these include the following. Ways of solving simultaneous equation problems. Elimination. Substitution. Graphical. Cramer's rule and the method of a matrix inverse. You shall consider only the first three while the others can be found under matrices and systems of linear equations. Quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are generally of form, ax squared plus bx plus c, equals zero, where a, b and c are constants. You shall consider only two ways of solving quadratic equation problems in this case. Factorization method. The method is as follows, although it is not always possible. Inequalities Inequality is a set of two or more algebraic expressions joined together by an inequality sign such as greater than for greater than, less than less than, greater than or equal to, greater or equal to, and less than or equal to, less or equal to. Inequality is solved almost the same way as equations. However, there are just a few peculiarities. Graphical solution to inequalities if a less than b and x lies such that a less than x less than b then x exists within an open interval written as, a, b. But if x lies such that a less than or equal to, x less than or equal to, b, then x is said to exist in the closed interval written as, a, b. Notice that endpoints a and b are not included in the first case whereas they are included in the second case. Different authors adopt different shading methods. In the example above, the unwanted region is not shaded. Further applications of inequalities can be seen under linear programming, in BUS, 122. Summary of Study Session 5 In this study session, please note the following. 1. An equation is two, or sometimes more than two, algebraic expressions that are joined by the equality sign, equals. For example y equals x squared minus 3x plus 2, and x squared minus 9, equals zero or equations. 2. Literally a linear equation whose graph is a straight line, is usually of the form y equals m plus c, where, m is the gradient and, c is the intercept on the y-axis, the point at which the graph cuts the y-axis. Other examples are y equals 2x plus 5, 
y equals x divided by 2 plus 6 and 3 years plus 12 x equals 18. 3. Ways of solving simultaneous equation problems. Elimination. Substitution. Graphical. Cramer's rule and. The method of matrix inverse. 4. An inequality is a set of two or more algebraic expressions joined together by an inequality sign such as greater than for greater than, less than less than, greater than or equal to, greater or equal to, and less than or equal to, less or equal to. Study Session 6, Limits and Continuity Introduction the idea behind limits is to analyze what the function is approaching when x approaches a specific value. Algebra reveals much about many functions. However, there are places where algebra breaks down thanks to division by zero. We do not mean to indicate that we are actually dividing by zero. Instead, our meaning is that we have to avoid that point because the laws of arithmetic fail to be reliable at that point. A natural question to ask is what happens at such ill-defined points? Is there a logically reliable procedure with which we can elicit information about such cantankerous points? In this study session, you will be introduced to limit and continuity. Limits Limits explain what happens to any function, as its independent variable, x, approaches a certain number, say c, consider the function. y equals x squared plus x minus 2 divided by x minus 1, this function is not defined at x equals 1. But, with limits, you can have an idea about what happens as x approaches 1, 1, either from above or from below, right or left. Continuity A function is said to be continuous at a point x equals c if the graph of that function is unbroken at the point c. If you can draw the graph of the function through the point x equals c without removing our pen from the paper, you say the function is continuous at c. A function f is said to be continuous at c if a, f, c, is defined. B, lim, f, x, exists. C, lim, f, x, equals f, c. Types of discontinuities. There are two main types of discontinuities, which are removable discontinuity and essential discontinuity. A function is said to be essentially discontinuous at point C if the lim of the function does not exist at that point. But a function is said to exist removable continuity if fc is not defined but lim fx exists. Summary of Study Session 6 In this study session, please note the following. 1. Limits explain what happens to any function, as its independent variable, x, approaches a certain number, say c, consider the function, y equals x squared plus x minus 2 divided by x minus 1. This function is not defined at x equals 1. 2. If lim fx and lim gx exist, then x to c, x to c. 3. A function is said to be continuous at a point, x equals c, if the graph of that function is unbroken at point c. 4. Types of discontinuities are removable discontinuity and essential discontinuity. Study Session 7, Differential Calculus Introduction. Differentiation is an essential aspect of the branch of mathematics called calculus. This mathematical tool is essentially useful in finding the rate of change of one variable, with respect to another. It is also very important in establishing optimal values, maximum and minimum values, of variables. This study session will introduce you to differentiation from the first, second, and third principles. Concept of Differential Calculus Differentiation is an essential aspect of the branch of mathematics called calculus. This mathematical tool is essentially useful in finding the rate of change of one variable, with respect to another. It is also very important in establishing optimal values, maximum and minimum values, of variables. The most important goal of any business is to maximize profit and minimize cost. To achieve these goals, the business must be able to predict the behavior of some critical parameters, as you vary others. He must know for instance, what happens to demand as he varies price, or the rate of change of profit, with respect to a change in demand. Differentiation from first principle. To calculate the gradient of a straight line graph is simple and direct. Gradient. However, to calculate the gradient of a curve at a point x equals a and y equals b, 
you have to approximate it by the gradient of the secant closest to its tangent at the point. To calculate the gradient of fx at the point A, you would find the gradient of the secant as x approaches 0. Notice that the x approaches 0. The secant approaches the tangent of the graph at A, which is our tangent. The gradient of the required tangent is then the limit of the above gradient function as approaches 0. This is called the derivative of y with respect to x, written as. This method of finding the derivative of a function is called differentiation from the first principle. Summary of Study Session 7 In this study session 7, please note the following. 1. Differentiation is an essential aspect of the branch of mathematics called calculus. 2. To calculate the gradient of a straight line graph is simple and direct. Gradient. Study Session 8, Integral Calculus. Introduction. Recall that under differential equation, given a function f(x), you found a new function, x, which is the derivative of the former function. In this study session, you will be introduced to finding the original function f(x), given x, and the methods of integration. Finding the original function f(x), given x. Recall that under differential equation, given a function f(x), you found a new function, x, which is the derivative of the former function. This process is called anti-differentiation or integration. In many real-life situations, x, may actually be known, and we are required to find the original function, whose derivative is given by, x. From elasticity, you can deduce price. You can also estimate future market shares from given share growth indices and future sales can be forecasted from provision growth rates of sales. In the process of finding integrals, the constant in the original function is actually unknown. This is simply because the derivative of the constant in the original function was taken as zero. Therefore, you must add some constants to the outcome of indefinite integration. Where c is constant. Methods of integration. There are so many integration techniques. But only one method shall be considered which the integration is by substitution. Substitution method. Recall differentiation by chain rule. Given y equals fx equals x23. Three steps are therefore required when using the substitution method of integration. 1 take u as the factor whose derivation is the second factor of the integrand. 2 rewrite the integral in terms of u. 3 find the resulting integral and substitute for u, in terms of x, in the result. Summary of Study Session 8 In this study session 8, please note the following. 1. Types of integration are a. The indefinite integration and b. Definite integration. Two three steps are therefore required when using the substitution method of integration. a. Take u as the factor whose derivation is the second factor of the integrand. b. Rewrite the integral in terms of u. c. Find the resulting integral and substitute for u, in terms of x, in the result. Study Session 9, Free Optimization Introduction Derivative-free optimization, or derivative-free optimization, is a subject of mathematical optimization. It may refer to problems for which derivative information is unavailable, unreliable, or impractical to obtain. Derivative-free optimization problems, or methods that do not use derivatives, derivative-free optimization methods. This study session will introduce you to minimization or maximization. Minimization slash maximization. Free optimization is another name for unconstrained optimization. Single variable functions. Find the optimum values for the following functions. A y e equals x2 to 4x plus 2, b, y equals 5 plus 3x, 6 by 2. At optimal points, critical points, the first order derivative equals 0. Necessary condition x equals 2 in a critical point. Again at optimum points, maximum or minimum, this second order derivative is either less than 0, maximum, or greater than 0, minimum. Multivariate functions. The method of finding optimum values of multivariate functions is similar to that of single variable functions. First, you must find this stationary point by equating the first order partial derivation to zero. This is the first order condition or necessary condition. Summary of study session 9. In this study session 9, please note the following. 1. At optimal points, critical points, the first order derivative equals zero. Necessary condition. 2. The method of finding optimum values of multivariate functions is similar to that of single variable functions. Study Session 10, Derivatives of Multivariable Functions, Partial Derivatives Introduction 
In the earlier part of this study session, you considered the derivatives of single variable functions, y equals fx, in which y is a function of just one variable x. But in real life, most variables would depend on more than one variable. The demand of product A may depend not just on its price, but also on the price of its substitute product B. In this case, y is said to be a function of two variables, or, written as y equals f. This study session will introduce you to partial derivative and derivatives of implicit function. Partial derivative In the earlier part of this study session, you considered the derivatives of single variable functions, y equals fx, in which y is a function of just one variable x. But in real life, most variables would depend on more than one variable. The demand of product A may depend not just on its price, but also on the price of its substitute product B. In this case, y is said to be a function of two variables, or, written as y equals f. For simplicity, you would want to know how y behaves when one of them changes, while the other is kept constant. Let the function below represent the total demand, q, of two products, 1 and 2, if their respective prices p1 and p2. Q equals 875 to 4 P1 to 60 P2. You might be interested in knowing what happens to total demand if P1 changes while P2 is kept constant, or when the reserved case. Given Y equals F, then the partial derivative of Y with respect to, written as, is simply assumed to be a constant, and assuming is a constant. While N unit increase in the price of the first product will bring about a decrease of 4 in the total demand, a unit increase in the second product will cause a sharp decrease of 60 in total demand. A wise business manager would be more careful in manipulating the price of product 2, than that of product 1 since the marginal impact of product 2 is higher than that of product 1. Total demand is more than that of product 1. Derivatives of implicit function Some functions are not stated explicitly, meaning that the dependent variable, y, will not be explicitly spelled out as the subject of the formula. Summary of Study Session 10 In this study session, please note the following. 1. The derivatives of single variable functions, y equals fx, in which y is a function of just one variable x. But in real life, most variables would depend on more than one variable. 2. The demand for product A may depend not just on its price, but also on the price of its substitute product B. 3. Some functions are not stated explicitly, meaning that the dependent variable, y, will not be explicitly spelled out as the subject of the formula. Study Session 11, Set Theory and Its Applications Introduction A set is simply a collection of objects that are properly defined. By this, you mean that given any set, it is possible for us to say whether or not an object belongs to it, the set. The student is definitely conversant with the set of mathematical instruments often called math set. It is possible for us to say that set square, ruler, protractor, pair of dividers, etc. will belong to this set. And you can also say that water, chalk, and chair do not belong to the set. This study session will introduce you to the set theorem. Empty sets. A set is said to be empty if it contains no element. A set of uneven students with seven heads would be empty, for instance. An empty set is also known as a null set and may be represented by two curly brackets or the Greek letter phi i.e., or sets can also be represented using set builder notation as shown below. A equals x slash x is an integer. 2 less than x less than 7 the above is read as a is a set of all x's such that x is an integer lying between 2 and 7. i.e. a equals 3, 4, 5, 6. Subsets and universal sets. A set, b is said to be a subset of another set c if and only if all the elements of b are found in c. For example, if b equals 1, 3, 4 and g equals 1, 2, 5, 4, 3 then you can say that B is a subset of G. The reason is that all the elements of B, i.e. 1, 3, and 4, are found in the set G. You then write BG. Notice that the arrangement of the elements in a set is immaterial. Many authors have tried to distinguish between proper and improper subsets. They postulate that a set D is a proper subset of another set H if all the elements of D are found in H and there exists at least an element of H which is not in D this they denote as DH. What they call improper subsets are actually equal sets. They say that if all the elements of B are found in D, and all the elements of D and B, then B is an improper subset of D and D is also an improper subset of B. These, they denote as BD and DB. But if BD, and DB, then B equals D, the two sets, B and D are equal. 
The universal set is that which contains all the elements under consideration. It is important to note that the concept of universality is paradoxically relative. It means that what might be considered, as a universal set in one situation might just be a subset in another. For example, if you are considering students of the business administration department to be enlisted into the male football team, you would be interested in choosing from among the males of the department. Out of which are might select 22 males. You may further wish to select just 11 males to play the first match. Now name the sets above as follows. B equals set of all male students of business administration department. B equals set of 20 best players selected from A above and C equals set of the first 11 selected from B above. Notice that C, B, and B A and indeed A could be your universal set. But also note that A could actually be a subset of another universal set, i.e. the set of all the students in the Department of Business Administration. Venn Diagram Venn Diagram originated as an attempt to be able to visualize the content of sets and thus be able to properly manipulate what could have otherwise been a complex of set problems. While rectangles are used to depict universal sets, circles are used for subsets as shown below. Note that the set Subset, A is entirely within the universal set mu, hence, all the elements in A must be found in mu. Union and intersection. Union. Let A and B be two sets, then the set C is said to be the union of A and B, denoted as C equals a union B, if C contains all the elements found in both A and B, without repetition. Intersection. Conversely, given the sets, a and B above another set D will be the intersection of A and B if D contains all the elements that are common to both A and B this is denoted as D equals intersection B. Set complement. Given a set A, another set A is a complement of A if it contains all the elements that are found in the universal set but are not found in A. Disjoint sets. Two sets, A and B are disjoint if their intersection is empty, meaning there is no element common to both sets. Finite and infinite sets. A set is said to be finite if it has an exhaustible number of elements. Thus a set may contain millions of elements. But as long as we can exhaustively count them, no matter how long it takes, it is a finite set. Examples I, the set of students of the Department of Business Administration, University of Benin. 2, a set of all university undergraduates in Nigerian universities. Now, notice that it will take an enormous task to do the counting of the elements of this second set. Yet, it is a finite set. 3. A set of all English alphabets. Conversely, a set is infinite if the elements cannot be exhaustively counted. Number of elements of sets. The number of elements of a set A, for instance, is denoted by an A, read as N of A. Summary of study session 11. In this study session, please note the following. 1. A set is said to be empty if it contains no element. 2. A set. B is said to be a subset of another set C if and only if all the elements of B are found in C for example, if B equals, 1, 3, 4, and G equals, 1, 2, 5, 4, 3, then you can say that B is a subset of G. 3. Venn diagram originated as an attempt to be able to visualize the content of sets and thus be able to properly manipulate what could have otherwise been a complex of set problems. 4. If A and B are two sets, then the set C is said to be the union of A and B. Study Session 12, Mathematics of Finance Introduction This study session is designed to give students insight into the various application of mathematical estimation in the field of finance. It will highlight the structure of interest rate, simple and compound, present value and future value of money, annuity as well as sinking fund and loan amortization. Interest Rates this is the payment made for the use of money. Thus an interest rate is the measure of the time value of money. It may be simple or compound interest. Simple interest. This is the interest turned on an original amount invested, the principal. The amount of principal and the interest payments remain the same from period to period. Simple interest equals principal x rate, percent per year, x time, in year. IESI equals PRT. Compound interest. This is the interest earned on the principal in addition to the previously earned interest. Interest is added to the principal as we earn it during the period. We then compute interest on the new balance, often called the compound amount, during the next period. Interest can be compounded daily, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. Compound interest, therefore, means paying interest on previously earned interest. Future value. 
an amount of money invested today will have a higher future value than an original amount because of interest earned. The future value of a lump sum, i.e. single amount, invested today can be computed as follows. FV equals P, 1 plus I, N. FV, future value. P, present value of a single amount invested, principal. I, interest rate per period. N, number of periods. Present value, discounting. This is the process of finding today's value of an amount of money due to be received in future N periods. To find the present value of a specific amount, you discount the future value, FV, with an appropriate interest rate to the present. The interest rate is called a discount rate. Future value and present value have a reciprocal relationship, as can be seen by comparing the formula for the future and the present value of a single amount of money. Annuity An annuity is a series of equal payments or receipts made at equal period intervals over some periods of time, with compound interest on the payments or receipts. You can divide annuities into 1. Ordinary annuity 2. Annuity due The future value of an ordinary annuity the future value of an ordinary annuity is the sum of all payments, and the compound interest accumulated on each. Present value of an ordinary annuity. The present value of an ordinary annuity is the amount that would have to be invested today at a certain compound interest rate to enable the investor to receive the series of future payments over a specific period. Bic Limited would have to invest 30,374 Naira today to have the money available to make payments of 10,000 Naira at the end of each of the next four years. If any payments have involved this approach will obviously be quite time-consuming, hence the following formula can be used to obtain the present value of an ordinary annuity. Present value of annuity due. The PV of an annuity due is the amount that would have to be invested today at a certain compound interest rate to enable the investor to receive the series of future payments from now over a specified period. Sinking fund and loan amortization. Sinking funds. One use of the time value of money concept is to determine an amount that an equal periodic amount, payment, an individual or company can set aside to accumulate a specific amount in the future. As each periodic amount is set aside, it will be immediately invested. This is what you call a sinking fund. It can be used in providing for the replacement of fixed assets, the retirement of debentures, etc. Loan Amortization an interest-bearing loan or debt is amortized if both principal and interest are paid by a sequence of equal payments made at equal periods of time. The main feature of an installment loan is that the borrower repays the loan in equal periodic payments that embody both interest and principal. Summary of Study Session 12 In this study session, please note the following. 1. The relevance of the time value of money and finance and their estimation. 2. The methods of calculating the present and future value of money. 3. Discuss the concept of annuity, the types, and the estimation of annuity due and ordinary annuity. 4. Highlight the relevance of sinking funds and loan amortization in capital recovery and project execution. Simple interest. This is the interest turned on an original amount invested, the principal. The amount of principal and the interest payments remain the same from period to period. Simple interest equals principal X rate, percent per year, X time, in year. IESI equals PRT.